Aloha and welcome or welcome back to the Palace of Persephone. My name is Talisa because I'm going to have some new people coming in here as I'm talking about new things. So hello, welcome. Uh, my channel transforms and changes just as often as I do, but in a nutshell, it is supposed to and is a place to hold a space for all of us to continue to transform and level up and to find our deepest, truest core of ourselves, which the core of you is the highest vibration of you. So I've been going through lots of changes this summer and I'm kind of going to be unpacking that in this video so that way as I move forward making videos, there's a better understanding of what it is that I'm even doing to begin with. And that's just kind of every, like the thing that all of us are going through at this time as we continue to transition further into a new type of way of being as humans on earth, as we're beginning to transform personally, we echo that out into the collective, all of us as a, a being of humans here on earth. So to make this short, I have notes because I can ramble and I do ramble and I learn from watching other people's like they have notes. And I think I'm gonna do that because yeah so this video is basically some of the things that I've been going through and changing and transforming through that have really assisted me and not falling into like a pit of depression or confusion or anxiety or doubt um, outside of just sitting and allowing Reiki to flow through me or sitting and meditating there are times and spaces where you won't be able to always do that even after you find that time and space you might then go right back into an environment that's kind of jarring and so I've kind of been feeling overwhelmed in my environment and the changes that are occurring and so despite my Reiki despite my meditation uh, I have been finding but there was still something dissonant within my external space. Something still wasn't flowing. And I'm so grateful. And I just made only one other video about it recently. But I recently have discovered that I am a human design projector. And I strongly suggest that if you are wanting to discover more about yourself and learn more about your human body and your energy and the way in which you are meant to move through this world, we're not all created the same. First of all, we're all individuals to begin with, and then second of all, we all have these unique encoding uh, processes within us that come from astrology, comes from I Ching, it comes from the Rig Kabbalah. There's all these systems that human design uses to help you understand how your energy works here. And I highly recommend uh, you can go on jovianarchive.com or if you fly humandesign.com, there's a bunch to find out the basics. You do need your, your birth time, so try and get that if you don't have it. Um, but I found out that I am a 2-4 splenic projector and learning this, I'm not going to make like a whole video of just me saying this is what a projector is. I'm sure there'll be some projectors who are like, hey projectors, you're here because you're looking for other people talking about their experiences as a projector. But I know also some other people will just be coming to learn how to decondition from any process. So kind of trying to keep the container a nice size for everyone to be able to receive something but there's a lot that I have been learning because I am now aware of my energy as a projector and it wasn't like learning the system told me things about myself I didn't know but rather it was showing me things that confirmed my inner knowing which I had been putting away and setting aside because it wasn't resonating to be like well I feel this way but why isn't my environment allowing me to feel this way and so I have my notes how and what I am deconditioning as a projector and whatever design you are um, you could be a generator a manifesting generator a manifester a projector or a reflector whichever type you are there is some conditioning that you have received because outside of human design we as humans have been conditioned programmed trained whatever you want to name it we have been ingrained since childhood taught to do certain things by our parents by our peers by our teachers by everyone who considers themselves an authority over us but as we know as we're growing that we are our own authority human design is going to allow us a great way to not only re-raise ourselves but to raise the children that are now coming onto earth in a healthy way for their energy flow so that we can all live in our design which just feels so good to me so yeah the first i have five things on my list the first thing of how and what I am deconditioning as a projector is personal alone time preferences. Something that I learned 
outside of just being a protector, but also a 2-4 line to being the hermit, is that it is quite natural for me to desire time away, to desire time alone, to desire time in my own space and energy field, and it's healthy for me. And it doesn't mean I don't like people, and it doesn't mean I don't enjoy eventually being called out to go and engage with the environment around me, but that I also really just enjoy being by myself. I also enjoy just reading a book. I enjoy dancing in my room by myself. I enjoy being in the experience that I'm in, nothing else altering or affecting that. And traditionally, that's what usually would occur. And this is why I'm saying I'm deconditioning it because I was reflecting on just even through childhood, there were so many times that I liked to spend time alone. There was, I mean, I was an only child until I was 14. And so a lot of my time was in my room and I was coloring and just creating and dancing and singing and maybe for a child who isn't a projector that would not be healthy or a two line a hermit line that they would maybe be out of the room and wanting to go and do things and do this and that but for me I was happy doing that and so what I'm doing now in terms of all the conditioning I received about why are you always in your room oh hell there you are you've been upstairs all day like hearing all of these projections as a projector hearing all these projections on like why I'm choosing to be alone instead of someone simply saying Oh, do you enjoy spending time alone like it's always there's always an assumption that if you enjoy spending time by yourself that like something's wrong with you and I'm here to tell you that there's not and that I think it's probably healthy for most of us as humans to have some portion of our day alone and that's healthy and that's probably needed to unpack some of these things because how would you have the time and space to think about anything if someone else's mental field is always on yours so what I'm doing now the action steps that I'm taking in knowing this is to clearly and concisely state to others I do enjoy having alone time I do enjoy spending some time by myself and doing some things on my own and dedicating an amount of time a day or maybe certain days of the week to just hermiting and it's necessary and it's been in this recent week that I've been learning I've just been downloading so much information that I've been able to allow others to understand as well as myself understand what can come up through that like all of these things didn't come to light until I spent time alone all of the things that I've been shifting and moving through especially in terms of feeling really low lifting my vibration happens as I re uh, cycle out what is not mine and to unpack things that don't belong to me in my energy field and as a projector you take in the aura of those that are around you so I'm being very conscious about what I'm plugging into but I'm gonna go with my next note note number two um, what I'm deconditioning as a projector is my sensitivity to energy be it people places things lights anything and this was something again what I recommend you do in terms of understanding your projector is learning about what is natural to you and then go back to your childhood and see when you did those things naturally and if anyone was telling you that it wasn't natural. And so my sensitivity to energy, sometimes I'd be overwhelmed being around too many people. I would want to be alone. Oh, what's wrong? You're fine. Nothing's wrong with you. No one's doing anything to you. Yeah, not consciously. Subconsciously, I'm pulling in all of this stuff sensitivity to lights came out really prominently when I started working more. Oh, someone's walking to get maybe the mail. I don't know. <laughs> Gigi's outside. But anyhow, so sensitivity to lights in my work environment, um, fluorescent lighting just hurt my body. Like I felt like a gremlin. I just couldn't do it. And really having a sensitivity to the, the dimness of like I like a salt lamp. We use this at nighttime. That's like our usual light. I don't really like overhead lights. Um, sensitivity to places, too many people, too many things. Like I really enjoy feng shui and I feel like most projectors might be like something I'm just observing. will probably enjoy the practice of feng shui, which is setting up things in your room a certain way with certain angles pointed out and this here and there, creating a flow in your space because you feel that. And so like if there's a pile of clothes on the floor, I feel the energy of the pile of clothes jutting out on me. So now that I understand that that was something like I didn't like certain textures of clothes, I didn't like turtlenecks, I didn't, there are all these things. And for a projector, that is very well something that we could be sensitive to as we take in what's in our environment. So that's something I'm deconditioning too. I don't have to feel bad, I don't have to feel weird that I don't like certain things. And not to say that I didn't feel this way, but I feel like if anyone's going to give me crap for it, I'll be like, look, I just don't care anymore. <laughs>
<laughs> that's essentially what I'm just gonna be like, oh, well, that's your, that's your perspective. This is what makes me feel comfortable and I'm not going to continue to condition myself to be uncomfortable. My next thing, it's kind of one of the bigger ones, what I'm deconditioning as a projector is my bitterness in not having success. And those of you, for all of those who are already subscribed and do, do and have been following the journey, you understand that like my goal on here has kind of always had this vein underneath it with this desire to continue to grow it and expand it and allow others to receive their own downloads and activations through what I learn. And then also implementing all these things that weren't necessarily working. And so I'd be pushing and pushing and pushing, trying to make things work or trying to initiate this or activate that. But what I was learning a lot as a projector, um, as far as this strategy for a projector goes, is to wait for an invitation. And that doesn't mean you're just sitting around not doing anything. It means that I'm meditating, I'm journaling, I'm working on myself, working on my energy field. And then if someone notices my aura, and they feel called to speak with me, that's the invitation. And then I choose from my spleen, because I'm a, a, a splenic projector, my spleen, my instinct tells me whether or not it's an alignment, it's right for me, centered for me in my highest self timeline to work with that individual. And so I hadn't been doing that. I've been forcing and forcing and trying to make things work and also trying to like create a container for a bunch of people to work with me at once but I learned that as projectors it's better to work one-on-one -on -one. so I'm like releasing all this stuff um, I did have a patreon I was attempting to again force like okay I'm gonna have like a whole container uh, all these people can join and we'll all do Reiki on Sundays and trying to give Reiki to too many people at once and so instead now I'm simply creating new offerings all together so that I can work with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis in multiple ways and like I said, this has all occurred over the course of a week. So, so many downloads have come from finding my design, which is why I'm sharing this. So, uh, a, a theme for projectors, there's one for each person in the not self theme, and then when you're in your design. So, not self theme for projectors is bitterness. Like, I keep pouring out, I keep trying to help, and no one's receiving it. It's because I'm just, I have to let those beings find me. And that's when you find your success. And in assisting others, the success comes. And so, this was a big one to unpack because like I said, I had been trying to force something that maybe works for a generator or a manifesting generator, something where they feel called to do something so they go and do it. Mostly manifestors are the main ones who can do this. They feel called to do something, they go and do it. And that's for them. Uh, as a projector, I'm meant to continue to honing my practice and my skills. And as people want to receive something from me then, that's how the exchange works, which works as like a hermit because then I can just be chilling in my cave and then someone comes up to the cave and they're like, hey, I got some questions about like my galactic ancestry. I want to know what I'm doing here on planet Earth and then I can be of service. My next note, uh, my next point rather, is deconditioning the intense masculine force around me and releasing that. And this is something that I feel a lot of feminine beings on earth are learning to do as like a whole collective of women is to be releasing all of this conditioning that has you pushing out too much in your masculine energy. I do exercise masculine energy. I wrote this list. I made a plan to do this. I'm making plans to work on the van. We're working on a van to travel. These are physical masculine action orientated steps, but I'm also learning when to sit and to care for myself and to relax and be receptive and to work on my affirmations and to connect more to my divine feminine embodiment. So unpacking the intense masculine force is not easy, especially as a Capricorn rising. So I'm just like, I want to get it done. I want to get it done. But now I'm learning to have some patience to be more gentle with myself. And this is something that we're all going to be learning to do is to know when the, the time and call is to move forward in something and when it's time to sit back and receive. And so I'm creating more of that flow and that's probably going to be one of the most difficult ones that I'm doing on this list because sometimes I feel like if I don't do anything, nothing's going to get done. But I need to trust and I am trusting that even if I'm not initiating the action step, those things are going to flow and come when it is time and I'll have the energy for it because projectors energy is not consistent and we don't have the same amount of energy every day. So I'm learning to be very, um, I already am very effective of like my time management. Like I know how to get something done in a very short, concise amount of time to conserve my energy, but it's about knowing when enough is enough. That's what I'm learning. 
My next point is deconditioning the why I am, um, why providing a mirror, oh, deconditioning the fact of why providing a mirror or guidance um, doesn't always work or help when I do it for others. And again, this goes into the waiting for the invitation. As a projector, you're able to, you have a penetrating aura, so you're able to like go in and zoom and pull open like all the things of the person that you are connecting to one-on-one. -on -one. And you're able to just see all these things that that person can't see about themselves. And you want to assist, protectors are here to guide, guide them in things that they can release or integrate or put into their lives or take out or new routines or habits that you can start to do that will allow you to live more like in your unique design and the life you want to live in your dream life. But telling someone the things that they should be doing when you haven't been invited to uh, first off, most likely not going to be received and may taken as an offensive or like could trigger. And so really what it says you need to do is wait and allow someone to come to you and ask a question and then decide if it's right for you to answer it. <laughs> That's hard for me to do. So it's not hard for me anymore. I'm claiming it's not hard for me anymore. And now essentially what I do is I know that if someone's meant to work with me, they will come to me and ask me. And I will be happy to assist them should my body tell me it is in alignment to. And this is something that I've seen time and time again. And they say, like, the human design is an experiment. So you're supposed to play with your design. Or experiment with your design, rather. And so sometimes I'll do something without being invited and then see how it makes me feel. <laughs> and it don't feel good. <laughs> or I'll experiment with the design of waiting, have someone come to me and ask, and then provide. And so this is something, like I said, this is all new things that I'm, I'm experimenting with now. And my final note before I close out this video is about how I should have always trusted my intuition. As a splenic projector, the spleen is an organ that we used to use back when we were living not in houses with nice, comfortable, you know, cushy experiences, but rather living on the earth, needing to hunt and look for food and be safe at night and sleep. The spleen was what guided you towards your safety, 1717, as I looked at the camera. And so if I was walking down a trail and there could potentially have been like a snake or a bear, my body might have been like, oh, and stopped me. But what I've learned is the spleen will only tell you once. Once it tells you, it won't tell you again. So once you get that initial answer you're supposed to just listen to that and trust it and stop trusting so how i always how i should have always trusted my intuition they call it your splenic authority but it connects to your intuition your trust your knowing it's like okay i'm gonna stop and i'll just go this way instead um projectors over time have learned not to trust that and a lot like what the main thing for human design is learning to trust your new authority and your brain is no longer your authority your mind space is simply your mind space to analyze calculate and observe things when you need to utilize it your mind is no longer what you need as like your your uh, pilot i guess like it's no longer steering your ship it is now the, the little guy next to you holding the telescope and you're like, hey, what do you see over there? And it's like, they're just kind of telling you things. You are the one in charge. You are you are the authority of you. Um, over time, we did need our minds at one point as we were evolving. But now that we're in the year 2022, moving further and further into continuing to evolve as a human, uh, the mind is no longer necessary in that way. So imagine when you talk about your mind, say, well, my mind thinks this. Don't say I think this my mind is thinking this but my spleen is telling me and it only told me this once and trust that but anyway this little side note so these are just some of the main things that like i wrote down that i've deconditioned already that are helping me move so differently throughout my day that are allowing me to feel more in flow to feel more like and like most of us as children before we are conditioned and programmed we are perfectly uniquely in our design and I can attest to this by being around children right now a 10 year old and a, a almost four year old and of knowing their designs I looked them up and seeing their like strategy and response and seeing them live by that as a manifesting generator their 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 sacral tells them mm -hmm, or mm -mm. and I literally can hear that and see that in them and I want <laughs> to preserve that and to like 
nurture that because that's where you find your just beingness. Your, you're just you're in yourself. You're in your core self without any other conditioning. That's, that's why I said I'm unpacking it. I'm deconditioning it and taking off me and just being my little inner child self. And that's why a lot of stuff leads back to inner child work. But anyhow, so these are just some things I've been uh, deconditioning and unpacking and I feel as so though if you are a projector, this could be something that would be useful for you to think and take some time about. I do recommend, recommend writing a list and seeing what comes up for you and uh, yeah, that's it feels good to do and like I said, as the things have been coming in for me, I've been changing and shifting a lot of what I'll be doing on the channel. Um, I'll probably make another video for like how I've come to really understand like who I am, why I'm here, and what I'm meant to do. And I will be offering like specific one-on-one -on -one courses, programs for the beings who want to connect with me to take and work with me in that way to do for themselves because it's been immensely helpful for me. So as the channel continues, it's going to be more in, in the vein of what I'm already envisioning based on what I desire is to be sharing the things that I learn as I travel, as I explore the earth. I really love traveling and exploring and adventuring and sharing magical moments with Gaia, with nature, with animals. So a lot of what will be on here as I'm working on the brain for brain work, eventually traveling and uh, sharing the message for water and offering healing services through activations and Reiki or any kind of downloads, any kind of uh, wisdom that I can share as a projector with the beings who wish to connect with me in an organic way. So it's going to be lots of traveling, lots of talking about water. I still am going to be heavily doing lots of research on the best way in which I can be an advocate for water. But those are some of the things that are coming in and it feels good and it feels in alignment. And I wasn't able to sit and find that until I sat and thought more about my design and allowed some of those things to come off. So I've been eternally grateful. It was a birthday gift, the human design book. So I've already been like, I told my partner yesterday, I'm like at this, have this meter in me of like downloading a new level up, a new activation. And I was at like 80% yesterday and today I was like, I'm at 100. I've gotten there and it feels good. So I'm grateful to be able to now share that on here and for us to continue to grow and evolve together and to inspire that in you. So I trust you received this. You'll sit and write your own notes. You'll look at your human design, do it together too. And yeah, I'm just going to go chill now and sit in some feminine container energy. And until next time, I trust you'll stay open to any signs or synchronicities that are awaiting you in your now moment. And until then, I'll send in peace and send in your aloha.